You back at it? No, I wasn't. I was just telling. I was saying yes. I was you know. Girl, I was about to press go. You ready now? Okay. Boom, we back at it. Another another banger interview we got here. Welcome to the twenty million dollar podcast. The twenty Blige million dollar podcast. Twenty million dollar. Okay. You know why I say that? Nah. I mean, like you know, the white man might bring you a blank check. What's what's the price? How a much? Is, how much is how much the how much is it worth? Depending on what we talking about. I mean, which, just like which which object is certain different objects is worth different things. Yeah, all pricey though. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm taxing. If the white man had me a blank check, I'm taxing. That's what that's that's the whole premise. Yeah. I don't even. I don't, it's just a saying, honestly. I don't really. Don't, I don't really. That's really it. But I'm sorry. I got a little distracted. This is the Blasey Network. We have a good episode coming, and today we have the biggest, the one and only, the B- DJ of Baltimore, DJ Major. Thank you for coming. Appreciate. It. Thank you for coming. Um, how how was the day? What's up? Tell me something. Tell me something. It's a, it's a Friday. It's a, sat, it's a Saturday. Saturday, Monday. man. It's Saturday. What's going on? Uh, we got a lot going on today, man. We just we fresh out the tour. We about to we getting ready for little baby baby money tonight. My brother Bo Dollar's birthday party. So we're going up. We're back in the city Saturday night. We about to turn up. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, I wonder more so people people that are probably listening. You don't really have a lot of interviews out there of you. Um, do you want to give like a backstory about where you from or like? DJ Major from Baltimore, Maryland, East Baltimore, Maryland. You know what I'm saying? Shot his own name team. Okay. Yeah, the Runs DJ, Mansion Major, whatever you want to call me, DJ Major, man. Just a whole brand inside itself. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, a legend off of DJing for real, for sure. Yes, yes. I, more so, I, the, for the me that, that brought you to, when I, when I first came across you, you helped me. I was like a, like a young rapper, like way way like when I was a teenager and stuff. And you helped me get a show, and I appreciate it. And and I've been st- stuck into the whole major experience since then. Yeah, so. that's what that's what I show I show love for free. You feel me? Like yeah, that's what that's what I'm about. I'm I'd be glad to. It make me feel happy when I hear stuff from people like that for real. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like time like I helped them in a certain type of way. I mean I ain't doing this in vain for real. I'm helping each one reach one. You feel me? So. Uh, that made me feel good about what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely when I introduced me to you. Um, more so, tell me about when did you start DJing? Uh, so, initially, I started DJing with my brother. Shout out my brother, DJ Money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, grew up with him together around the, around the block. You know what I'm saying? And we just fell in love with music. His father was a DJ. Mm-hmm. So, I think this was probably about, I want to say, like, my ninth. My ninth grade year, tenth grade year, for real. What high school you went to? Maribel. Maribel, okay. That's yeah, good. shout out to Maribel. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, we was pretty much helping him go to parties. This was when you had to have, like, you couldn't DJ off your laptop. You had to have uh, vinyl, CD, stuff like that. For the Rick and Ricket? Yeah, he was DJing. I, that's where I first learned how to DJ from off of CDs. Mm-hmm. It was never a computer. Okay. So you had to really have the ear for it if you was a DJ for sure. Wow, but no we, no laptop? No laptop. What I can't even I can't even imagine. I was born in two thousand, so Yeah. No laptop. But um yeah. So we used to help him like, you know, carry the vinyls because you used to have crates and crates of vinyls when you go to parties. When you do parties mm-hmm. and you was DJing off of vinyl, you used to have crates, like ten ten crates for real. So we used to help him carry the crates and the parties and we just fell in love with the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And uh, initially, I, I had started hosting. My brother was the DJ when we first started, like, learning how to do it. You feel mm-hmm. me? So I said, yo, I'm a host with you. You learn how to DJ. So, and then initially, I started learning how to DJ as well. And we started vice versa on each other. You feel me? Uh, getting each other's skills up. So, yeah, that's how I learned. That's, that's probably was like, I don't know, man. I got to do some, I got to do my research on how long I've been DJing, but definitely 10 plus years. 10 plus. Yeah. That's how I feel, or is it? Do you really think that? That's that's exactly yeah. Ten plus years. Ten plus sure. years. Yeah. Okay. When did now? Tell me more so about this whole vinyl thing. Like when? Like I don't even. I can't even comprehend about playing vinyl on. Like I've n- I never even used a vinyl machine. Yeah, ever. you know, initially DJ started from vinyl records. That's you know, just thinking back on how you listen to music nowadays to vice versa how people used to listen to music back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, people used to have the big boxes with the vinyl records. They never had like radios and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, 
DJs, you know, found a way to take those boxes and have a mixer and learn how to blend music and stuff like that to it. So you're taking two things of vinyl and you're mixing it together. So okay. that's how vinyl, I would say, started for real. Wow. Wow, I definitely need some more research. I thought I did enough research. Yeah, man. I need some more research on DJing. I watch you can I watched a Netflix uh Netflix series about hip hop. Mm -hmm. And hip hop really initiated from the DJ from having parties and stuff like that. Yeah. Rap. Like initiated from a DJ playing records, mixing different like I was saying, mixing different things together. Okay. That's how rap started. Mm. And then you had MCs and the MCs that started rapping and stuff like that. So. See, I, I, I'm starting. To, I'm, I remember that part. I remember. That. I remember the, the MC part, but I never even. I thought it was just just they were just playing speakers. I didn't know it was an actual like DJ. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, okay. So tell me more. So tell me about. Um, you said that was around when you graduated high school. Yeah, around. It was. It was around high school. I would say probably like ten plus years. I definitely. Yeah, but definitely would say probably like middle school, going into high school type tip on a DJ. Because mm. I was a drummer before I was a DJ. I've always been musically inclined, I like to say. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I used to play drums and stuff, too. Okay. So, I was always musically inclined. Like, my mother used to buy me, for Christmas, I used to get, like, instruments and stuff. Okay. Drum sets, uh, bass guitar, guitar. I used to always, Damn. I used to, yeah. I, I wanted to find my niche of music. I like the music so much. And it was just DJing. Just, how, many, like, how, many, how many phases did you go to until you ended up on DJing? That was probably when I was like a young phase for real. Like, you know, when you just learn how learn the music and stuff like that, but I just fell towards where as though I wanna learn how to, the people maybe not be the rapper, but mm -hmm. or the person singing the song or Cause you definitely artist. have the ear for it. Yeah, but the ear for it. Okay, tell me how you came up with the name Runs Runs DJ. Just being the Runs DJ. A like, DJ for Runs. That's Runt's oh, DJ. <laughs> I mean it's pretty simple, but it's not Hey, it's, it's as simple as it get. Joke's up. Shit, man. I thought it was going to be like a story or something. like. I mean, oh, yeah, for sure, a story. But you asked me, like, where I come up with it. But, yeah, shout out to my brother, LB. Um, linked up with the, the official owner of Runtz. You feel me? The official bloodline of Runtz. That's mm. my brother. You feel me? Um, linked tell up me with Atlanta for like, we stayed, we was with LB for like two months in Atlanta. Tell me how, tell me about that experience. Like, what, were you, were you accustomed to like making those connections and talking to those people before then? No, I just offer good vibes. It ain't all like I'm coming to you to get some. It was just off a good energy and good vibes, being real with each other, understanding each other, like good energy for real. Like that's mm -hmm. pretty much how everything really works. It don't never, like some things in business, of course you, you put together, but like some stuff be really just good vibes too as well. So yeah, shout out my brother LB. And we've been locked in ever since. And I just, you know, I got music from them, DJ for some of their events, most of their events. Okay. That's how that's how I locked in with just being the runs DJ. That's that's, that's nice. That's nice. All right. So tell me about we're gonna come back to we're gonna come back to um, more so the come up of how you got to where you are today. But I more so want to talk about you say you just came back from tour recently. Yeah. Tell me about that tour life. I know a lot of people don't really hear about it. So, tour life is. It's lit when you're coming from a city like ours and you get to see different things, different people, different vibes. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, it's also work too as well, so it get tiresome traveling almost every day, you know, state to state, state, state. And I've done this many, this is like my, I think I've been on like seven tours. Oh, wow. Even if they was like, see me, even if a tour be three or four days, that's three or four days of me DJing in one city from different spots and stuff like that. So I, I consider it a tour. It is a tour. It is a tour. So, um, yeah, I didn't been on like seven, eight of them jokes for real. Oh, wow. You know, I was just, just blessed to be able to travel from city to city. Not, not even always on like the big stages and stuff. Even if I do pop-ups and the runs DJ and stuff like that, like just being in different vibes and different elements of the world is crazy. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, I, want some more, I want to talk about more about how did you get into managing? Managing, that was also another just good vibe on, on the situation as well. Um, shout out to Blue Benjamin World, Blue Benjamin Sleepy, my brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, yeah. How did I you meet them? Oh, wait, well, I want you to finish the story I'm about the managing. Right, so so I met them off. I used to do uh, homecomings. Mm -hmm. I used to do big homecoming tours in Baltimore for the high schools. Um, I still do them. I'll probably do one this year too as well. 
Uh, but every year we sponsor a homecoming tour to where so we just travel to different schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Sleepy at the time had records. Blue Vision World had records. Um, so, yeah, they just came and showed me love in, my, in one of my school mm-hmm. events, for real. That's how wow. we really linked up, for real. Okay. Me mm-hmm. doing a school event. Yeah, they just came and showed me love. Uh, Perform for the kids, took pictures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And we just was vibing and it was just up from there. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's great. But I had been new Sleepy from before even like the tours, like, I'm talking about like paradox parties and stuff like that. Brotherhood, like people don't even know like what's going on. Yeah, like, we don't even, we like, don't know. Yeah, man, do your research, man. One day they're gonna, see, it's, this a lot, it's a lot of, this a lot of keys and tools to the city. One day they gotta do a documentary on this, Kai Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day they gotta do a documentary on this shit, man. On this shit. Baltimore has, yeah, a lot of history for sure. Yeah, I definitely, I've just from me starting this podcast and just, just interviewing, like, just the people that I can get to talk to, it's definitely, I always leave with, like, I definitely need to talk to more people because it's like, I feel like it's a whole world that I don't even know about. You got to, like, yeah, for sure. And just like with anything in, that goes on in the world, though, it's, it's all a different type of world, so. Mm-hmm. Just got to lock in, especially if you're doing a podcast. So. Okay. Yeah, I definitely do have to lock in. Um, more so, okay, we're gonna go back to the come up. Tell me about more so your first your first moves. Like I know you didn't just, I know you didn't just go wake up one day and start hosting parties for little baby and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what you mean, my first moves? Like when I started DJ? Yeah, but your first parties, like they got your first recognitions. You know, tell me about the other come up. You know? Uh. That's a long. That's, 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 is that a long time ago? Yeah. The, nah, it ain't that long ago. <laughs> But um, yeah, the paradox. I used to DJ at the paradox. Mm-hmm. Basically, when I when I was coming from high school, being like the high school DJ. Okay. I was like one. I was the, one of the biggest DJs of the high school century of my generation. Like you know, it's different generations. Now. You go to everybody was in high school. Shit. But when I was yeah, I was the biggest. You ever heard of Takeover Entertainment? Look, I heard of the name. I heard of the name. You gotta know Takeover Entertainment. I heard of the name. I, I can't sit here and just be like, yeah, that, this, this, and that. You, did, I don't know. you know what you got to do one day? What I got to do? Just go on YouTube and just type Baltimore stuff, like nightlife, Baltimore. All this stuff is on video, bro. Mm. You can really learn the history of Baltimore on video. Wow. Yeah, no, I definitely You can learn anything on YouTube, but you can learn the history like, yeah. Wow, I definitely need to tap in. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, more so, talk to me about when you, when you first started DJing. Um, tell me about how, like, the process of it, like, you know, I don't, you know, you, of course, you, it's like being a DJ, you have to know when to play the right song at the right time. Right. And you can't just play that song at any time. Yeah. You just got to go off of DJ and be saying DJ like a feeling for real. You just got to go off how you feel mm-hmm. and then go off of how the reaction you're getting as well. Okay. You got to know music. You got to know so music. So I just, I just mix it all together, take a little bits and pieces from the greats as well. Mm-hmm. I was a student before I was a star. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and I'm still, I still would be thinking I'm a star yet, but yeah, I'm doing good for myself and coming from nothing. Mm-hmm. Seeing you at Afram, it was definitely an exciting experience. Yeah, that was one of my greatest, greatest accomplishments. Is that your, that's not your first time doing Afram, is it? Nope. How many uh, times uh, have you done it? That was my second time at Afram. I had DJ, shout out to my brother Fizzles. Mm-hmm. Um, I had DJ for Fizzles one time on a big stage. Uh, as a DJ, so yeah, shout out my brother Fizzle on that one. But right. this time I got my own stage, I was my own performer. That's great. My own my own show, so shout out to shout out to the airframe in the city of Baltimore for that for sure. Yeah, that's great. Um I was I was just I was just standing around just catching the atmosphere and it was definitely a sight to see. Okay, that's next cool question. Too, though. Next question. Talk to me talk to me about um you you've launched you you uh you launched you've launched uh you own you still own a studio? Yep. Tell New me Benjamin World. Tell me about tell me about starting that up. I've never tell me about starting up a studio. Starting a studio is hard, man. I know yeah. it is hard, yeah. It was hard starting this. It t- not takes a lot. a lot of money, a lot of investment, a lot of a lot of hard work to start a studio, so shout out to everybody that can start a studio, man, for real. What year we support y'all studio. What year? What year did you start? What year did you start thinking about making a studio? Did you even know anything? Like any? Did you know anything about? You know how did you go about? You know building it and stuff. Like I don't like what's the what was the plan? Like I don't I know you just started with a vision. Like I want to have a studio, but what was the next thing that you did after that? Shit, just put the work in. Just started to have a studio. 
That's the most simplest thing I can say, bro. I don't got long conversations no more. Mm. It's just simple, simple, simple things in, that you can say to just Im- implement your life mm-hmm. that you do, and you and you and you don't stop. So that's pretty much how it is. Like, like we can sit and talk about it step by step, but everybody's step will be the same. Yeah, that's so true. I can't, I can't. I just be telling people just keep. If you if you got a, a mission to do something, do it. Like, don't okay. be. Just do it. Do Do you have Do you have like a a routine that you do every day? You know, like do you wake up in the morning, make a milkshake or something like? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just work. That's it. Work. Yeah. Um. Tell me. Give me. Give. Give some. Can you give some gems to some DJs that's up and coming that don't necessarily have, that don't necessarily have the motivation to start and, yeah. Y'all gotta stop believing in yourself, believe in your brand, work hard, study music, mm-hmm. always study music. That's all you got. You ain't got music, you ain't got shit. <laughs> Joke's up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, tell me about Tell me about more so, um, do you have, do you, is there, I know you're, from, from being a DJ and playing artist music, you probably, you probably have like a, would you say a close relationship with some of the top rappers? Yeah, I, I'm not doing with a lot of the um, top rappers for sure. Shout out to everybody that I'm locked down. I'm, I'm not doing with a lot of the city for sure. I just try, not even if you top or bottom, like. I just try to lock with everybody to just show good love and good energy for real. And that's that's what it be based off of. So yeah, shout out to everybody, not just the top rappers, but shout out to everybody because somebody at the bottom right now might be at the top later. Mm-hmm. That's just how it goes. So you got to show love mutually, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get you. Um, tell, me, tell me about some of your experiences. Tell me about some of the type of people that you would run into as far as, you know, being in the DJ mm-hmm. business. Man, you can run into anybody, been any, anybody in the music industry, being in the in the DJ business. What's the craziest person I probably ran into? Mm-hmm. Uh, damn, I'm running into some crazy people. Ah, who, who have I ran? Into? All right, Kid Capri was a. I'm gonna say the latest one. Kid Capri was a <laughs> was a good run into. Okay. You feel me? Shout out to Kid Capri. He told me some good shit too. He told me some real shit, and he locked in like. And uh, what's his name? DJ. The, the DJ that went super viral that be wearing the top hats. I seen that. I seen it. I, I don't. I can't think of his name. Yeah, his name don't cross my mind right now. But yeah, shout out to bro too. Okay. Do you have Do you have a Do you have programs or something that people can go to see if you was like young kids wanted to learn how to DJ? Yeah, Serato DJs. Now when you use the computers, you got Serato. You got Virtual DJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shout out to DJ Be Easy and Quick Silver. They got a school. You can learn how to DJ. You ain't got to try to, if you don't want to, just figure it out on yourself. But yeah, they got schools for it now and all that. So definitely about to be a new generation of DJs. Okay. Okay. That's great. What do you, what do you think? Where do you see the future of, where do you see the future of some of, where do you see the future of bottom of music and hip hop? Like, you know, any yeah, other We got artists? a spot. We got a spot for sure. We just got to keep working, keep pushing. Start traveling more, start networking more, bring in, bring in what you got to the table. Sometimes if, sometimes if you got to chip off something on the table, participate in that. You feel me? Bring, bring in your ideas, your network to the table to help the city out. That's all it'll be about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, have, you seen, have you seen the recent viral clip of the uh, Baltimore and D.C. Bottle War thing? Yeah. Uh, do you even cue uh, me personally? I don't. I don't necessarily know why. Like, I, was it like a? I don't really know what's the point of the game or the war or anything. What you mean? Like, you know? I don't. I don't know why we should pour. Like, I I drink Costamigos personally. I never felt the urge to put on the ground that much unless. Can you kind of explain like the game or like the rules of it? There ain't no rules of it. It's just like you just poured out. Yeah, if, you, if I give you a bottle, it's your choice to pour it out. It ain't mine. So somebody got to pay for that, though. They probably paid for it. You, you think they, how you think they got it? But, like, isn't you supposed to drink it? Like, it's not, not if you don't want You're not supposed to. You don't have to do anything you don't fucking want to, bro. Okay. Don't. 
Jokes up. You don't got to do anything. You can do what you want to do in your life. Mm-hmm. If that's what they wanted to do at the time, of, I, that been going on. That ain't nothing new. I, that's crazy that, that that just went viral, though. But, yeah, that, that been, I got videos. I got hella videos on my phone at the point. I like, some niggas don't drink, but you still buy bottles for the ladies and stuff like that and mm-hmm. get your, your people around you good and stuff like that when you at a party. Oh, you don't drink? No, I drink. So, Are you asking me if I, would I have... Would you, look at? If you would, if you was, it depends on what liquor it was. If, if a nigga give me, a, if I buy like a, I don't know, if I get like a Bel Air, I might drown out of for real. But mm. I drink, I like to drink, so I wouldn't. I don't know. It depends on how I feel that night. Shit, you might feel so, you might be feel so drunk, you don't want no more. You just, yeah, fuck yeah, it. no, I know. Party definitely, over. I definitely. The party was over. Shit, was it was over? Yeah, you didn't hear no music. I mean, let me just. I just heard the DJ. He kind of was like, don't you know the DJ be talking in the middle of the. I didn't yeah, know. shout out to DJ Flo. Oh, you know him. Yeah, oh, that's great. DJ Flow. So, so is the is the DJ connection to DMV like a tight knit tight knit thing? It's getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's getting better for real. I don't, I want we not as tight as we we should be because if that was the case, then the game would change on everything. Like mm-hmm. people respecting the DJs more than all that. But yeah, we getting better though. You feel me? Like, step by step, we getting better. Okay. I don't got nothing bad to say about DJ. It might be a little, we might talk shit, and it might be a little competitive. It's competitive in everything, just like in podcasting. Mm-hmm. It's competitive in all type of business, games, anything. You feel okay. me? And life is competitive. Mm-hmm. So, um, but you know, certain people respond to that different. You know, you know, people have different feelings of how. Just like how you think about the bottle thing, and I think about the bottle thing, you have different opinions on things. Yeah, but it's and that's just part of life. Yeah. So. That makes but sense. At times, this is, this is just business. You know, so it's good. Okay, tell me about. Can you talk to me more so? So, I know you you you've DJed a lot of parties. You know, at the clubs more so specifically that you are you doing you doing one tomorrow or tonight? Yeah, tonight at Gargolas. We shot in the building. We got baby. You heard of baby money? No. Do your research on baby money. Shout out to baby money. Shout out to Detroit in the building. Shout out to the Z game. I ain't be writing brother. this shit down. Baby money. My brother Bo, you got the interview. You can yeah. shroom back. Yep, that's what I'm teaching some, some some gems right now, my okay. boy. Yeah, shout out to uh, Bo Dallas. Shout out to the Z game. Shout out to Jokes Up. Shout out to the Rons gang. Yeah, we in the building tonight. My brother Bo Dallas birthday, so we going up tonight. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell me what you do. To prepare for these nights, shit, I be locked into my uh my music. Mm-hmm. I just be locked into my music. Like last night, I, I've stayed up. I ain't been asleep like two days. I stayed up for like five. I said I did like five hours of just like in my computer looking at music, queuing things up, mm-hmm. downloading stuff. Like the day I just left my computer before I came in, mm-hmm. I was doing. I was adding some shit. So is it, so do you so you so you work hard to play hard. Yeah, pretty much got to. Okay, um, do do you have what is what's, do you have any like things that did you do post afterwards? Like, do you get a coffee or like what is your go to drink when you when you're DJing? Uh, shit, it be the vibe. I can DJ sober, I can DJ drunk, and DJ high. No matter, it just be the vibe. It's just oh, it's just. The I like the. I mean, I, I'm the runs DJ, so you know we be smoking good. Saying. We be smoking good for real. Okay. You feel me? Definitely be smoking good. And then sometimes, you know, we, we take a little sit of Don Julio, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, 42. Yeah, depending on how the night going. Like tonight is my brother's birthday, so we, we on Don Julio and we smoking good. Okay, uh, wow. So, so I'm, when I leave after this, I'm getting some Don Julio too. Yeah. So yeah. we on Don Julio tonight. We're like on Don said. Julio tonight, rep up. Rep the dark one, right? Yeah. Yep, that's, I like I that. Call, I call the, I call the uh, light skin. Light skin? Yeah, because it ain't dark. Yeah. It's, it's like brown skin a little bit type shit. Caramel. Right? Yeah. Okay, tell me about tell me about some of the tell me about some of the club. Have you ever had like a club nightmare? Like you walked in the club and you seen something and you're like, "Whoa, this is traumatic. I need to take note of this." So the wildest thing you seen in the club that made you take it back, that had you take in the back. Well, as far as like DJ, or I mean, just like also like you seen you seen you seen a fight start. You know, a bitch might spit on a bitch from four feet away. What's the crazy um, shit you seen while DJing? Dad, I see some crazy stuff. That's it? No, I'm trying to think. 
Um, damn, what's some crazy shit I say? I give you some recent shit. Mm-hmm. My man did a, 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 I call it a jump kick. A jump kick? <laughs> From off the section to a nigga face. What the hell? Yeah, the clown was funny. I gotta show you the video. You went viral with that shit. Kicked him in the face? Yes. Yeah, I need to see this. So yeah. what did what happened afterwards? Was the party shut down? Nah, it just You just kicked the nigga in the face and everybody just was okay. It was with fighting it. and then it's, you know they broke it up and it was better than normal. Were you on the mic at this time? No, nah, I wasn't there, I wasn't there, he sent it to me. Oh wow. That was a crib but I'm saying like far as like a party atmosphere. That was a, the latest, craziest thing I seen for real. Kicking a nigga in the face is jump jumping kick on some until like Bruce Lee type of thing? Yeah. And it was a nigga. That was some wrestling type shit. <laughs> what, 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 did the, what did the nigga have on when they kicked him? Uh, what, shoes? Yeah, like, what do you have on? Like, what, what, do, you, what do you have on some uh, black Air Forces? No, he had on, I think he had on the white Air Forces. I think. <laughs> that's not even, that's, that's even worse. Yeah, I think he had on the white Air Forces. Wow. That's funny, yeah. Okay, um, so today you said you are a busy, busy man. Can you tell me some of your routine as you do? You wake up, answer emails, or... Like, do you, you already asked me what I do when I wake when I wake up? You just said work, and I'm trying to get more in depth. Like, when do you when do you brush your teeth? Like, when do you brush your hair? Like, well, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to get you a full one one, but I'm just trying to like, I don't what's know. your routine? I don't got no routine. Is it a certain thing that you always do? Like, you always eat grapes in the morning, or? Nah, I don't, I don't always eat grapes in the morning. You mean you don't even be you haven't even slept in two days, so I don't even that's crazy. I just try to get everything I need to be done in. Okay. I guess. When is when is a DJ's rest day? DJ rest day is usually probably like Mondays. Okay. But I'm actually up make, trying to make deals on Mondays. Wow. So. Always working, like you said. Yeah. But, yeah. I go to the gym and shit like that or be out smoking and shit, regular shit. So what tell, what, tell me where you get this mindset from where always working, always working. Um, where I get the mindset from of it? Yeah, like I don't know, it just made me happy in life. I guess mm-hmm. I feel like if I work to, if I keep working, if I keep working, eventually I get to where I want to be. To where I'm like, man, fuck this shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's just the, always the motive. Okay, so it's like it's like that's just like once I get this number, I'm done. It was like I have a number. It's, everything's not about a number, or money. It's just life. Okay. You gotta work to enjoy life. Yes, you do. Money is not always in, is the number one thing to enjoy in life. You need money, of course, to live, but it's not always the one thing that you should just be in, trickling in your mind about living a life. Okay. Um, okay. So I have a it's a segment here that we do, um, and I and I it's just a simple two questions, two answers. It's called "What do you want?" And you say one thing that you would want from somebody, like as far as like a relationship or your homie, it is up to you. Or you can say, and then you can say one thing that you like, I would not fuck with them if they did this type thing. What well, on, like one thing I want in life or one thing I want? Like from a person, it can be either like your homeboy, it could be from in a, well, like in like a girl. Uh, or if just from people in general, like it's up to you. What I want from people? I mean, let's just keep it. Let's keep Love, it more. Love, loyalty, and trust. Okay, what's one thing you don't want that you're keeping away from? Uh, you? One thing I don't want is fake love. Fake love. Fake love. Um, any, any. I mean, you have plans today, so I don't want to hold you up. Um, anything you want to say to the people? Yeah, man. Shout out to twenty million. What was it? Twenty, 20 million dollar podcast. Twenty million dollar podcast. Thank you for coming through. I really appreciate it. I'm saying, hopefully, he he want to log in for forty and not just want to just get twenty. Yeah, I didn't think forty that. or sixty, and then never mind. So that jokes up. But um, yeah. shout out to twenty million dollar podcast. Runs DJ well. Major. Yes, Runs yes. DJ. Runs for life, nigga. Jokes up. We in the building. Yeah. Thank you for coming through. Already, already.